There aren't many characters in American history that conflict so many people than Frank and Jesse James. Be it the James Younger gang or later the James Ford gang. To some, they were Robin Hood-like characters that took from the rich and gave to the poor, and to others, they were just nothing more than thieving, cold-blooded murderers. But there is one little tidbit about them that most people in history glaze over, and that is the fact that they were incredible horsemen with an exquisitely fine taste when it came to horses. And that alone added to their success and why they were so successful plying their trade for so many years. Jesse Woodson James would be born September 5th of 1847, but the bulk of his story takes place during and after the American Civil War. As a teenager, Frank and Jesse James would ride with Contrail Straders and along with Bloody Bill Anderson. Neither of these were fine, upstanding individuals, as a list of atrocities attributed to both of these men are endless. Jesse's days as an outlaw would begin on February 14th of 1866 in Liberty, Missouri. And a trail of cold-blooded murder and robbery would be behind him for 16 years. From local lawmen to bounty hunters, U.S. cavalrymen, and Pinkerton detectives could not pursue Jesse James. And it was all because of his horses and the horsemanship that he had learned during the American Civil War riding with Contrail's Raiders. William Buffalo Bill Cody. Yeah, that, that William Buffalo Bill Cody. Often in a brag, would compare his horses to those of Jesse James. Cody would claim that his horses Tucker, Brigham, and Duke could outpace James's horses of Stonewall, Ebony, and Skyrocket. Bragging to authorities, Buffalo Bill Cody would say that that's why none of them could catch the James gang, why they were making fools of them, because they rode superior horses. Jesse did have some favorite horses, though, one of them being a bay mare named Katie. In fact, Jesse liked this horse so much that he would leave her at home during robberies. Jesse would leave Katie at home during one robbery that didn't go so well. Jesse would actually be dumped from his horse and almost caught. The sheriff that almost caught him would take Katie as a consolation prize at being disheartened by not being able to catch James. He would return the mare not long after, after Jesse wrote a letter threatening to kill the sheriff unless he got his mare back. Jesse would ride Katie from then on until a raid at Gad's Hill, where she would break loose and run off. Jesse simply borrowed another horse from a nearby farm, leaving the farmer a note saying, If you can catch my mare, you can keep her in exchange for your horse. Each of Jesse's horses distinguished themselves. Ebony, a solid black thoroughbred, traveled quickly at night, while Skyrocket was a better horse at day. Stonewall, who was named for Stonewall Jackson, was always dependable and would eventually become one of Jesse's favorite horses. But there was something special about each of these horses. Several of them were imported Kentucky race horses. In fact, Skyrocket had even raced and had several starts at Monmouth Downs in New Jersey with thousands of dollars in purse money. Jesse would even retire from the outlaw life briefly while living near Nashville, Tennessee. From the outside, he would look like a respected citizen, a high-class southern gentleman, where he would get involved with the race industry. Among the horses that he would race at the time were horses like Jim Malone, Jim Scott, and a horse named Tadpole. He would also race a horse named Red Fox, who was said to have been nearly unbeaten. But like most murderous thieves, his retirement didn't last very long. And in April of 1882, while planning a robbery with Bob and Charlie Ford, Jesse, who had gotten hot from working his horses that morning, would take off his coat and turn his back to the Ford brothers and begin to actually dust a photograph, a photograph of his horse Skyrocket. Or at least, that's what one legend says. Regardless of the painting or photograph, when Jesse turned his back on a predetermined signal, the Ford brothers drew their pistols, and one of them shot Jesse to death. Though Jesse and Frank James were cunning, it wasn't their cunning alone that allowed them to 
elude law enforcement for so long. It was their taste in horses. And the fact that they were expert horsemen. So I'm telling you right now, if you love this type of content and you watch this to the end, head over to my profile. There's a link tree there, and on that link tree is a link to my podcast. There's also to my merch store and a few other things, but specifically my podcast. It's called Behind the Horse's Eyes. You can get anywhere you get podcasts. Here's the deal. I have guests on all the time, and we talk everything from about the BLM roundups and horses to feral horses in Appalachia to working with off-the-track thoroughbreds to working with special needs children and horses as a form of rehabilitation, your first job in a barn. If there's a subject, we've pretty much covered it if it's in the equestrian world. So if you love that type of content with some history sprinkled in there too— then give Behind the Horse's Eyes a listen. Also, give it a five-star review and a comment because that helps your boy out too.